We honor you, members of the faculty, and my brother who I met in August of 1989 when he came here back from Africa from, via Baltimore. And when he stepped foot on the campus in August 1989, he was a superstar already. And I want to thank God that God has kept him and sustained him and blessed the world through his gifts. We are blessed tonight by my brother, my Morehouse brother, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. Didn't he bless us tonight? What, what an amazing challenge and word that he gave to us and certainly to members of New Birth. We thank God for you. And we're blessed to have him here in the city of Atlanta. And certainly I'm thankful uh, for my wife, Andres, who's here with me tonight. And also other members of the House of Hope. Y'all holler at Y'all holler at me. Holler at me. Amen. Listen, John 14, 12, you find these words. I thank our praise team for coming and blessing us with this moment of worship. Amen. You find John 14, 12, these words. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do. I want to talk for a few moments from this thought, greater is calling. Take your seats, greater is calling, greater, greater is calling. It was in 325 AD that a meeting was called to bring confirmation and clarity to the teachings of a fellow whose name was Arius. Arius struggled as Christendom has for 2,000 years, struggle with the reality of whether Jesus is of a like substance as God or of the same substance as God. Amazingly, one Greek letter, Iota, was so significant that it divided the church of the Lord Jesus. Arius espoused that this principle was called homoousius. Saints from across Africa, the diaspora and the world met to determine was it homoousius or was it homoousius? Is Jesus of the same substance or a like substance? The determination was made that the challenge with Aries' perspectives and his ideologies is that he included iota or I in the middle of his presuppositions. And even though it speaks theologically, it also speaks psychologically. Whenever you put I in the middle, division and dissension will be our reality. And so they met to affirm what they call the full divinity and the full humanity of Jesus Christ at the Council of Nicaea. And then it was in 381 A.D. that Apollinaris began to speak, and he spoke the reality is that Jesus was too divine to be human, and perhaps too human to be divine. And so meeting convened there in Constantinople to correct the reality is that you can be a human being in the natural, but whenever God super intersects with your natural, that miracle signs and wonders can be uh, your fomented reality. And so since the beginning of our Lord's ministry, much has been debated regarding who he was and what he represented. Is he fully human? Is he fully divine? Uh, such was the case here uh, that even the British theologian Peter T. Forsyth he tries to bring some congruence between this Johanna and the account of the gospel. It suggested that Jesus Christ, when he came to earth, had what he called a moment of kenosis. It 
It was a voluntary emptying of himself. That when he decided to come to save humanity, he had to empty himself of some of the divine realities that he enjoyed in heaven with God. Uh, Forsyth suggests that this kenosis dealt with Jesus our Lord while on earth perhaps emptying himself of some of his omnipresence. Uh, he suggested that for several years while on earth that although Jesus was divine, he was not omnipresent, meaning he was not everywhere at the same time. Uh, Forsyth suggested that if he was everywhere at the same time, while on earth, he would have never had to say, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, because he would have to, have to go to a place where he already was. Uh, he voluntarily emptied himself of some of his divine attributes. He did not have to show off the totality of what he had, what he possessed, and what he knew. He emptied himself to become like us in order to redeem us. He emptied himself, perhaps even of some of his omnipotence. It is amazing here that Forsyth suggests that in Mark chapter 8, when Jesus touched a blind man, that once he touched him and asked him, what do you see? He said, I see men, but they're walking as trees. And then he came back to touch him again. Forsyth suggested that that is an indication that Jesus relinquished some of his omnipotence because an omnipotent God never has to do anything twice. And that when he came to earth to, to empty himself of some of his omnipotence, that he, that's why he could die on a cross on Friday. Because you can't kill a God in omnipotence unless he uh, empties himself voluntarily. And this is why when he got up early Sunday morning, he regained in what Forsyth called an epikenosis. And therefore could cry, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Because while I was on earth, I voluntarily relinquished some of my authority. And some of you are wondering, what does this have to do with us here on this afternoon? It is reality because Jesus is calling us in this Johannine account to respect the omnipotence and the deity of our Lord and to also understand that because he had become the resurrected Lord that greater is calling unto us. I know that you're human. I know that you struggle. I know that you're from your own Nazareth. But greater is calling unto us in this day and time in which we have been relegated and oppressed and marginalized and disenfranchised by Western and Eurocentric lens. I want you to understand tonight that greater is calling. Uh, that greater that has kissed us with the king of the solar system and darkened our skins with melanin greater is calling. It is calling us to revisit who we are as citizens of the U University of Timbuktu in San Corre. Greater is calling us to become Marcus Garvey's Pan-African vision. Greater is calling us to become Benjamin May's Sweet Oil of Eloquence. Greater is calling us to be the strength of Ella Baker and Fannie Lou Hamer. Greater is calling us to once again to prioritize who we are in God. I said greater is calling. And Jesus says in order to have the call and to respond to the call of greatness on your life. He says here is what you got to do. You Number one, you have to resolve to have faith. He says this is what I want to tell you. If you would believe in me. Now, this is very deep because when we came, we live in a day now of moral relativism. We now live in a time where there's secular humanism. We live, now live in a time where people have tried to suggest that while we respect the religions of the world, Jesus has become a world traveler. Have a perspective and a respect of all deities. Learn what you can learn, but do me a favor while you're learning at Morehouse, while you're learning about Zoroastrianism, while you're learning about comparative religions. Uh, don't get so caught up in your academic endeavors uh, that you leave Jesus uh, back at home with your mama. Listen, let me explain something to you. Euripides is alright. Aristotle is alright. It's alright to talk about Kierkegaard's theological suspension of the ethical. But whatever you do, don't forget. He says, if you believe in me. That word believe as the word pistuo in Greek. It comes from the word pistis. It means firm conviction, confidence, firm persuasion. The same word is used in Hebrews 11. So now faith cometh by hearing. 
Uh, that word there is, is pistas, pistas. He said that your faith, your belief must have some substance uh, upon which your faith rests. Faith is substance. Belief must have something underneath it. It is called hypostasis. Uh, the hypostasis is the physical residue that supports what you say you believe. Hypostasis. It is a scientific term. Whenever they made wine in the first century world, they put grapes in the strainer and they squeezed the grapes. The remaining, the remainder of the grapes being squeezed was called hypostasis. It was the evidence that faith and something physical had been in the strainer. It was also a legal term. If you bought property in the first century world, uh, in order to provide proof of ownership, you had to bring your hypostasis. Uh, it was the title deed, but it also was a Christological term. Uh, it pertained to Christ. Uh, the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 1 3 says that Christ is the express image of God, uh, that Christos is the hypostasis of Theos, that Jesus becomes the divine selfie of God. Uh, that if God ever decided to take a selfie, uh, the image would look like Jesus. I came to tell somebody uh, that your belief must be supported by something that you say, I, pref I trust God with. Uh, what does that mean? Don't tell me that you're serious about your work uh, and you have faith that God's going to help you graduate in four years or on that red shirt playing like me five years. Uh, but what you do, you party at homecoming uh, and you spend more time uh, with Patron and Hennessy than you do math and sociology. You've got to have something underneath your faith that supports what you believe. Uh, and if there's nothing underneath your faith, uh, you don't have nothing now faith you have dead faith and I want to say to every student here and everybody under the sound of my weak voice God is calling you to have faith uh, faith that you will succeed uh, faith that the inflation won't get you faith that regardless of who is in the White House uh, that I've never seen uh, the righteous forsaken uh, nor his seed begging bread somebody say I got faith He said, so if greater is going to be calling, the question is, what is your faith? What supports your faith? What, what, what gives validation to what you say you believe? Oh, God. He says, so if you're going to respond to the call of greater, you've got to resolve to have faith. But then second, you've got to realize you have to bear fruit. He says, I want you to do greater works. It seems to be a quandary, almost blasphemous, almost unorthodox. Uh, the unmitigated goal of the Messiah to suggest that we can do greater? How can we do greater than him reaching the summit of Golgotha's brow and bringing into fruition oh soteriological dispensation? How can we do greater than the one who stepped out on nothing and lit the sun one time and has never gone out or never been to a repair shop. How can we do greater? The one who put bulbs in the stars that have caused them to twinkle for billions of years. How can we do greater? The one who gave the wetness to the water, the whiteness to the snow, and the viscosity to the oil. How can we do greater? The one who gave the sweetness to the orange, the sour to the lemon. The one who gave the hyena its laugh. The dog its woof woof. The cow, the meow. How can we do greater? We can do greater. It is not in quality, but we can do greater in quantity. Jesus traveled by footmobile. He never had YouTube or the internet. Are y'all listening to me? We can do greater. We can be Atlanta and have a global mentality to touch the world, to go into places that our Lord never visited physically. We can do greater. We have the greatness of partnership, the greatness of technology. We have the greatness of our lineage, of our ancestry. That's why we can do greater. We can do greater because we have a prenatal ordination. Uh, God said to us, like he said to Jeremiah, before you were formed in the bed of your mama, 
before your daddy stepped up to your mama and said, baby, would you have an objection if a man of my complexion came in your direction and offered to be your protection? Before your wife's mama said, I do. Before they came together, God knew you in the heavens. I knew you. I sanctified you. I ordained you prenatally. And what I did allowed your parents to come together to form your body. And then I put the you that I knew before your parents came together, put your spirit in the body that your parents formed uh, and I put you in earth uh, to carry out the duty the responsibilities of what I knew about you before I sent you uh, and so you're not at Morehouse because of osmosis uh, you are here because he knew you before he sent you uh, and one day we got to step back up to him uh, to give account of what you did with the time you were down here and he's looking for the you that he knew before he sent you and if you get down here and get brand new and let people change you when you get back to heaven he gonna say depart from me I never knew somebody said I got to bear some fruit somebody got to be saved somebody going to be delivered my story is going to be used my struggles are going to be used to change the world not one tear not one heartbreak is going to be wasted God is going to use that and some of you are wondering I'm too frustrated to bear fruit. Seem like God is trying to destroy me. Seem like academics, seem like the challenges at home, the peer pressure, the academic load, it seems like it's destructive. How can I bear fruit? How can I do greater? Can I tell you how? You can do greater by remembering the story of the shirt. Shirt that went on a trip with its owner. And the shirt was taken out of the briefcase by the man who was going on a business trip. The man set the ironing board up and plugged the iron and began to iron the shirt. And as the man was ironing the shirt, the shirt started talking to the man. The shirt said to the man, man, are you trying to burn me? The man kept ironing the shirt said, no, shirt, I'm not trying to burn you. I'm trying to make you better. You got some wrinkles on you. That's some of you got to be. And you can't go looking like this, so I got to put some heat on you. Shirt said back to the man, well, it's uncomfortable. Are you sure you're not going to burn me? Man said, no, I'm not going to burn you because I love you too much. The first time I saw you, I went in the store, and because I love you, I spent my own money. I bought you with a price. And since I bought you with a price, I'm not going to let nothing come upon you and harm you. And the man, the man kept ironing the shirt and the shirt said to the man, well, that iron is hot. How you know you're not going to burn me? The man kept ironing the shirt and said, shirt, I'm not going to burn you. Here's why. Because before I start to iron you, I looked at your tag. I looked at your label. And I saw that you were a cotton shirt. And since I know you're a cotton shirt, I preset the iron for a cotton temperature. I won't put a linen or a wool temperature on a cotton shirt. So since I know what you can handle, I won't put no more on you than I know you can handle. I wish somebody would take a moment right now and say, I'm getting ready to pass some fruit. Listen. Somebody say, greater is calling. Somebody say, greater is calling. Woo! So, so, if we're going to respond to the call of greatness, we got to resolve to have faith. We got to realize we're called to bear fruit. But third and finally, if we're going to respond to the call of greatness, you got to remember, you've already got favor. I'm going to give you the ability to do more in quantity than I ever could do, Jesus says, 
in a first century context. Woo. You're going to be able to preach, to teach, to do business, to do law. I, I want to say to some of you students, some of the students at, Merce, at, 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 at Morehouse and at Spelman, don't allow even ministry to pigeonhole you. That's why I thank God for people like Dean Carter and Dr. Bryan. Don't let, because you're a preacher. I see too many of us, even at sophomores and freshmen, you want to act too much like a preacher. Don't get grown before your time. You ain't got to have a preacher voice. What's up, doc? Talk in your regular voice. God just didn't call you to be a preacher. He called you to be a messenger. And preaching is just one of the things that God uses to help you get the message out. You can be an entrepreneur. You can be a developer. You can be a turner. Don't let people put you in a box. Boxes are for things and not people. I said greater. Greater. And here's how you can get greater. You can get greater. He said, because I'm going to my father. And you got to come in my name. When I count the three, say your name. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. When we come in our own names, it's chaotic. On three, say your name. One, two, three. That's inharmonious. On three, say your name. One, two, three. That's incongruent. But this time on three, say Jesus. One, two, three. That's power. In that name. One, two, three. That's deliverance. So if you want to do greater, remember in whose hands to put it. See, a paintbrush in my hands, I'll make a mess. But a paintbrush in Picasso's hands, you can get a masterpiece. It all depends whose hands it's in. A tennis racket in my hand, I'll make you laugh. A tennis racket in Serena Williams' hands can lead her to become arguably the greatest athlete who's ever lived. It all depends on whose hands it's in. A golf club in my hand, I'll break the windows out your car. But a golf club in Tiger Woods' hands can win 14 major championships. It all depends on whose hands it's in. Nails in my hand. I can hang a picture, but nails in Jesus' hand. So he traveled down 42 generations, stopped off in the village called Bethlehem. He was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth. He was hidden in Egypt, baptized in the Jordan. Performed miracles in Jerusalem. Walked over Capernaum. Did miracles in Galilee. And one third, he told his disciples, take, eat bread. This is my body, which was broken for you. And then one Friday, I said one Friday, they took my Jesus on an old rugged cross. They hung him high and stretched him wide. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. Died. Then he died. Shake a neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, he died. Took him off the cross. And they laid him in Joseph's new tomb. Stay there oh, all night and Friday. Stay there oh, not Saturday night, but Sunday.
Somebody shout it early. Oh, y'all know I'm Baptist. I just can't say it one time. Sunday morning, he got up. Then he do it. Now you got the power. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. 